<laughs> like a little vampire to me dad. Oh, hello guys, how are you? Right, so, turned up to do a job today, and basically, I wanted to do a video on how to do a rolling gauge to show you very brief introduction, but to show you how you can start building on it. And um, if, you, if you're struggling with how much you can put on, this is a way that you can keep putting more and more and more. There's no end to how much plastering you can get done with this rolling gauge. Uh, then we discovered that the ceiling line was a massive big kink in our, the, the ceiling kicked up about an inch. Um, so we had to deal with that as well. So we got the derbies out. Um, and as well, I thought as a little bonus, I'll throw in showing you how I get around spotlights without the flipping plaster splattering you in the face. So, anyway, let's get straight to it. This step I always forget to show. This is me sealing the ceiling with SBR. People always say, do I need to seal it? Yes, here's me doing it. Okay, so we're going to do the sealer. A couple of little walls. That, this one, this one, and this one. Just to, just need tidying up a little bit. But, this is the main reason we're here. Look at this. Come around this side, mate. We need to straighten this out. So, I don't know if you can see that. Let's just show you the speed skin. See the gap here and the gap over here? Now, as it happens, when there's lumps and bumps in the centre of the ceiling, you don't really see them very well. But when the ceiling line isn't straight, it really stands out. So what we're going to do when we're plastering this now is we're going to straighten this ceiling line out as best as we can in this area here to make this ceiling look nice and flat. Right, so let me tell you, I've got a little bit of a thing for Toyotas. I'm a bit of a Toyota anorak. And I got this old Toyota as like a little bit of a toy for myself. And because my van's broke, I'm flipping ended up working out the back of the thing, which is a nightmare. Straight in. Straight in. Oh. So these old Mark III Toyota pickups are just going up and up in value. So the idea was to get it, fully restore it, and put it under a sheet in my garage and just keep it for a couple of years whilst it goes up in value. But there they are, I'm working out the back of it whilst my van's getting fixed. So a bit of a pain, but that's life. Right. Straighten that section of the ceiling out. I'm not going to use a speed skim because it's a little bit flexible. So, we've got the option. I haven't got my van with me because it's still broke. I'm on a little truck, so I'm just looking what we've got on the truck that we can use. We've got a little height section, but it's serrated, so that's probably not going to be ideal. I mean, that's more for leaving the surface of the render open, but we could use that, but it's not ideal. I've got a serrated derby. There, I don't know if you can see the little serrated part of it. <laughs> But that's quite, again, this is the thing with derbies, look at this. It's fairly <laughs> flexible. So that's not really ideal. But this one, it's got a bit more rigidity to it. So I think we'll use this for straightening the ceiling out. As you can see, as I said before, We've got this situation where we need to build basically an inch there. Now, see there, yeah. Ideally, um, with a bonding coat, well, I know we can get this with the finishing plaster because it's only going to be a small section. Now, we've just mixed in a nice wet bucket of finish. So, I'm not going to try and build this up now with brand new finish because it will be soaking wet. So, the first coat is when we need to try and get it leveled out. I'm going to put a bit on here to build it down a bit, then plaster the rest of the ceiling with the first coat, and then come back to here, and by then, the stuff will be going off a little bit, be a bit more thicker, we'll be able to get a bit of a better thickness to it then. Trying to do it when it's soaking wet will just cause a nightmare. Right. We're using our lovely stainless steel trial that we're wearing in. Don't forget, you've still got till the 14th of March, Put your name on the list to win this. I'm just going to put this in wet now. I'm not going to try and get it on any sort of thickness. Just sort of just put a little coat on there just to start building it up where it needs it. Now I know what you're thinking. He is never 
Never going to be able to get that straight with just finishing plaster. It's too thick. So what we're saying, if you're a gambling man, would you put money on me? Would you say I'll be able to do it or not? Whilst I've got you as well, look at this situation. We've got six spotlights in the ceiling. I'll show you a nice little way of getting around these without having loads of stuff fall off. So when you're skimming, just stop just before them. There. And what you want to do is just come out from the spotlight right round, like so. Without letting too much plastic go up inside that part. There you go. If you let too much plastic up inside there, it falls out. So just do it like that around each of them. And then before you flatten it or before your second coat, go around with your small tool and just cut that bit of plaster off every single time. And that way it'll stop it dropping, landing in your head and holding your eyes or whatever else. I'll show you as we go along. Right, I'm not going to talk you through this one. I'm just going to show you how I do it when I'm when I'm not sort of thinking about it and I just do it automatically. I'll show you how I get round them. There's a text message. Like remember the same technique, stay away from the wall, come out, back in, take a bit, go into the wall, that keeps your wall clean and to be efficient and fast, toe to heel, yeah, I'm starting there, I'm not going to overlap what I've done, okay, I'm only overlapping very slightly, yeah, there, and what you want to try and do is, I'm not demonstrating this very well because I'm going around all these spotlights, but you want to be trying to reach to the centre of the ceiling at least. So a nice big long span when you come back. So that you don't have to do too many passes on the ceiling. You know, you want to reach in the back as far as you can. I haven't been doing that because I'm only sort of getting this little ceiling on. So I'm not too, not too rushed at the minute. So it doesn't matter if I just fart around in the middle. But if you get the big ceiling on, you want to literally... Get your, get your steps right, look at this, on your trestle, get used to standing on your trestle and know where it is. So you start at the start, reach in, yeah, and as you step back, you want to be stepping back and leaning back like this as far as you can. Because ideally you want to come down one side of the ceiling with one pass and then down the other side of another pass. You don't really want to be having to go back and fill the middles in it if you can help it. Keep this back edge clean. You can do a clean job with a dirty trowel, so always wash all the slop off the back of your trowel every time you get a little bit on it. This bit that we've got left now, this is a lot thicker than what it was when we first mixed it, so now I'm going to build down that section and we're going to hit it with the derby, just flatten it out a little bit. Now, if this was any bigger, 
If this was a massive section, then I'd definitely use bonding. But because it's only a little area and it's not super thick, you know, it's only about an inch. I mean, it's not ideal with finish, but I'm just showing you what is possible. So I'm just going to keep building this out now. And then we're going to hit it in a second with a derby. What we've got is this joist here, underneath here is a low joist. And over here is a high joist, so the seam comes along, sort of dips down and then goes right up. And that's what we're going to get rid of. Don't want this soaking wet really, you just want it damp. So I'm gonna take the sheen off it because I don't want the stuff to slide straight off the back of it. Same as like with your handboard and your trial, if it's soaking wet, the stuff just slides off, but you want it damp. You see the build up on it? I've, I've got a build up of plaster and this will dry that plaster down. So we just damp that down. Now I'm not expecting this to look perfectly neat straight off. We're just getting it to the right sort of shape. So it's not gonna look gorgeous, it's just going to give us an idea of how much more we need to build down. So now we've built that up as much as we possibly can. Same with this whole sealer. We're going to let this pick right up now. Now before I do that, obviously we're over at Artex. So you know my little system already. I'm going to hit it at the speeds here. Flatten the sealer in, get all the big lines out of it, and then we're going to leave it, leave it, leave it till it's gone right off. That up there will have gone right off, and then we'll second coat it and we'll build that a little bit more, then hit it at the derby again, you know, build it a bit at the start, go right around the whole ceiling, put a little bit extra on the second coat, and we should be somewhere very close to that. You might be wondering why did I use the derby instead of the speed skim up there for that bit where we're leveling out. And the reason is because when you put this on the sealer, you apply a bit of pressure to it, but the thing is flexible. So as soon as you put a bit of pressure on it, you know, where the bump is will flex in and it won't get it flat, it'll just bend to the same shape. These are excellent for flattening in when your plaster's on, you know, fairly thin. They're great for flattening in, but they're not good for getting things straight. If you want to get things straightened out, you need to use something rigid. Now you can use a, a derby or a feather edge. The reason I've used a derby, one, is because I've already discussed I haven't got my feather edge with me. I've only got a serrated H section, which is not really ideal for finishing plaster anyway. Um, but two, the derby is great because, because of these handles on it, as you're rolling off, yeah, the stuff can be put back on again because of these handles. If I had all of it here, like you would have a feather edge, you're sort of rolling off and you can't put it back on because your, your thumbs are in the way. So that's the benefit of the derby. Okay, so the speed skim has got to be quite flat. You don't get around these spotlights very well with some of that sort of size. So I'm just going to go around these now. The stuff's picking up a little bit. Just flatten them in a little bit. Now I'm going to go round all of them and then we're going to clean them all out. I'll show you that in a second. I'm careful, I'm not dragging away from them because what will happen is if you drag away, say I drag away and I catch that little bit of plaster there that's dried out and I drag it across my ceiling and it'll score the ceiling and that's the reason why you clean them out as well. So at the minute I'm not coming away from them. I'll show you, watch this, watch, I'll, show, I'll do this first, right, I'm just smoothing the lines out round it, that's the last ones we do, now, this is what, do you know this for, watch what comes out of here, so all this stuff, isn't it? if you, if that drops out when you're travelling across it, it'll 
a big chunk of dry plaster and you'll drag it right across the ceiling like a mess. So you just go around and clean them all out. And then when you put your second coat on, you haven't got all these little cuts to deal with. So we're just getting ready to second coat now. And there was a little bit of stuff really going off because this has gone quite firm now. There's a little blob really going off. So all I've done is, um, we just flatten this a little tiny bit more, just with the handboard and chart putting it on. So, and I built this corner down a bit more. Come round here and look at this now. So that now, after the first coat, is pretty straight. There's a little bit here and a little bit there. So, that's all well and good. We're going to second coat now. But okay, Kieran, go round this side and show them from this angle. It's okay filling down one angle, but you've got the other side of the angle. Now look at that. See the curve that's begun there? But I hold this in here now and show you this. So can you see that? Can you see the gap there? So Kevin's Kevin's answering for you. He's going, yeah. <laughs> so we're gonna we're gonna build this out as well because you need this line looking fairly straight as well. Now granted that the joist is dipped, so this isn't going to be absolutely perfectly level, but we need it straight because it needs to be pleasing to the eye. And it's all about getting the ceiling lines lovely. As we said before, the centre of the ceiling could have a little bit of a dip in it. We're not going to start screeding and floating the whole ceiling. As long as the ceiling lines are nice and straight, the ceiling will look beautiful. Now we're going to start second coating. I'll show you the ceiling now because it's really gone in. And we're going to start back in that corner again to carry on with building it up. That's the only part of this ceiling really that, that is out of shape that we're trying to fix. Everything else is just getting the skin smooth. Now what I'm going to do is, I'm going to start there, put it on fairly thick around that area, past the rest of the ceiling, and then put another coat back over that section. Now come in. That technically means that this section of the ceiling, sorry, ignore that bit of mess. Pretend you didn't see that. This this part of the ceiling has then had basically four coats of plaster. Now that's not ideal for finishing plaster to go on that thick because it ripples. But look, I've let the first coat go right off and that's the majority of the thickness done. So we're not gonna struggle with that now. If I was trying to get over that when it was soaking wet and it was this thick, we have all sorts of nightmares, but because I've let it pick right up, we're not going to have a ripple problem, it'll be fine. So I'm going to start now, building this out again, with another little coat. And as I said, at the end of this, we'll go over it just one more time with a bit more stuff. So I'm yet to second coat the rest of the ceiling, I've just put a bit in here now. I'm just going to show you now, I'm just going to rule it out a little bit. And then that way as well. There we go. Now, I can see, okay, there's a slight little hollow there, but nothing. If you stand back now, you can see that's nice and straight. I know there's some overspill on the wall and if you come round go around that way here and get on from this side now look how much straighter that is now if you're sitting at the derby so now i'll second coat the rest of the ceiling and i'll go over that one last little time there and that'll be perfect and then we just try to look like normal but i will show you in between just again how we go around these spotlights on this light again same thing just working away from it just like that yeah it's a lovely trial this oh by the way did i say you can have this trial if you like the look of this it's going to be fully worn in check in the description there'll be a link you can put your name down um names will be getting pulled out of a hat to get this trial sent to you brand new stainless steel but worn in nice and sharp for you Right, 
Right, now we're getting back to the start again when I put another coat over, then we're going to hit it with the derby, and then because we've been faffing around with the ceiling, and I want to let the first coat go like in first, let it really pick up. I didn't want to put any walls on, so I'm going to introduce you now to a rolling set. So what that means is, it's a gauge that is going to be a number of little mixes of plaster, but all sort of squeezed into one rather than a separate mix for the walls. So I've first coated the ceiling, I've let it go right in. Now I've second coated the ceiling, and then we're going to first coat some of the walls. Then we're going to go over the ceiling again, and then we're going to second coat the walls and go over the ceiling. So it's like two gauges sort of interlocked. It's called a rolling set, and it's just a way of getting more work on. Now, there's no limit to this. You could potentially put a seal on, first coat, second coat, first coat of wall, flatten the sealer, second coat of the wall, and then there's nothing stopping you, sort of second try on the sealer, flatten the wall, and put another wall on, and, and, and your mix can sort of have no end to it. You know, you could plaster all you wouldn't want to, I don't know why anyone would want to do that, but you could potentially just keep putting on all day non-stop and then, um, you know, sort of knock it in the head about two and a half hours before you want to finish so that you can just try up the last little bits, but you end up just sort of interlocking the mixes together. It can get a bit complicated, a bit out of hand, so I wouldn't go too far at first uh, until you know what you're doing with a rolling set, but that's what we're going to be doing in a minute. Nice and flat. Right, let's first coat these walls and then flatten the ceiling. Right, so here we are. Kevin's doing a little bit of skimming. Kevin's got on this nib round here and this part of the wall here. I've done the fiddly bit there and this wall here. So let's just recap. The ceiling has been first coated, flattened, second coated. Then we're first coating these walls. Then we're going to Flatten the ceiling. We may flatten the walls. First trial the ceiling. Second coat the walls. Second trial the ceiling. Flatten the wall. Ah, you get the gist of it, don't you? So that's that's how the rolling set works. You just have a couple of stages behind with the fresh stuff. Let's have a look at the level of concentration on his face. He's trying his best. He's trying his best not to drop any, aren't you, kid? <laughs> Because he's on camera, he's got to get it perfectly neat. He's being judged by the whole world. <laughs> See the toe lines? Yeah, I, I, Needs I to be know. a bit thicker. I know, it's because you're always here. I know, don't worry me. Do you like being filmed, no, Kevin? I hate it, so please. <laughs> okay. That's as much as Kevin as you're allowed to see. He doesn't like it one bit, so. Okay, so. It's hard to get this now because Kevin. Put there. Kieran can't really film me because he's doing his bit over here. I've just been over and flattened the ceiling. I've flattened this wall in. This is going to take a second coat now. And then I'm going to give the ceiling a first try. Kieran's getting on quite well with his wall. He's got that there. He's just going to go up to the doorway. I sort of took that bit there because it's a bit of messing around. Your trial doesn't really fit in anywhere nicely. Oh, there's a good point. Don't pull these down because you'll pull chunks of plaster off, okay? So when I'm cutting, I'm actually going 
like an upward motion. I'm cutting them up. I'm, I'm, it's hard to explain. I'm going like up, up as I'm cutting. If you pull down, you'll pull a chunk of plaster off. There we go. No corner trial necessary. Just use the corner of your trial to get that nice and square. Now look at this. He does this to me all the time. Flipping just holds the camera on my face. Just trying to get his little own back on me. Kevin's cleaning up. We were hungry, so I've nipped off to pick up some food from this lovely cafe. Here, and whilst I'm here, we're out telling when I'm having a little uh... Cheers. Right, that's it. Ceiling's all done. Show them around the ceiling, Kevin. All the edges cleaned down nicely. That's all finished. Now because we did a rolling set, this part of the wall around there is still uh, needed a third trial and a polish, which will be done shortly. Um, in the meantime, I'm also waiting, all these little lights can go back up. Um, I recommend that you should probably turn the power off before doing this, but you know, I'm a bit, um, a bit electrocuted that many times. <laughs> I don't care anymore. Well that's it guys, that's how we do a rolling set. That's how we straighten out that corner. Show them that corner here, that's nice. Here, I'll pass the camera in. Here, I'll take hold of the camera. Look at that now. Lovely and flat, right across. There's the lad there. He's had his sausage butter, he's happy, aren't you? He doesn't know about my coffee cake that I had. <laughs> <laughs> he was moaning. Where have you been? Um, yeah, he's gonna, Kevin's gonna give that another trial and polish. And then he's going to clean up because look at the state of this floor. He's got, ah, he's got to clean up. He's got some cleaning to do the lot. Now, this is polished. It's starting to go off. But some places are still the lighter colour. Now, people get all excited and tell me, you know, people are always asking me, how do you get that solid colour? Well, I don't. I mean, if you look at my ceiling... Yeah, there's different colours of plaster. It's all completely smooth, but there's some bits that look mottled. Let me spin this round. There we go. Ceiling's done. The angle is now nice and flat. All finished off. This is going a little bit slower because this was, um, you know, the second part of the rolling hit. Now, see the ceiling there? See how it's slightly got different colours in it? It's a little bit... See little patches of different colour? There we go. Some people say to me, Kirk, we want like a solid colour, you know, other plasters I mean, like, you know, look at this dust crap in the beard. Um, yeah, they say, we want like a solid, solid block of colour, we don't like this mottled sort of look. Now, what that is, when you give your plaster the first sort of trowel and you've used a bit of water, you bring off a little bit of fat. Now it's not the bad fat, fat from later in the gauge you can't use because it's too weak. But the fat from the first wet trowel, when you fill it in your hollows with it, it dries a slightly different colour, it dries lighter because it's not as concentrated with plaster. And that's why you get them. It's nothing bad, don't worry. When you paint it, it's completely fine. Um, if you wanted that solid colour, you have to sort of sponge float things um, or really, you know, make sure if you've got a tiny little bit of plaster on, you've only got one little wall on, you know, you can get it perfectly flat with your first coat, perfectly flat with your second coat, and then you won't get much of that. But when you've got a bit on, you end up having to wet the plaster a bit, you know, for your first trial, and you pull a little bit of plaster off and fill in bits in, and that's why it goes a different colour. It's nothing bad. Now, I know people will say, oh, you can't use fat, you can't fill with fat. 
you can't use fat from later on, the later stages, because as the plaster sets and you're flicking water and you're bringing fat off the plaster, that fat from later on, because it's setting, it's only very thin, it's like milk more than um, plaster. You can't fill anything with that because it won't set. But the fat from the, f the initial stages of the mix, you can. And, and it just dries a slightly different colour, that's all. So there's nothing to worry about. It's absolutely nothing to worry about whatsoever. As we just said, I'll just elaborate a little bit more on it. When you're troweling your ceiling flat, the whole point of it is, the whole reason you keep troweling it is to get it flatter and flatter. Now, as you're moving plaster around, if you flick a bit of water on the ceiling, if you've used a bit of water to lubricate the plaster, it dilutes the plaster a little bit. So what that means is that when you've pulled a bit off and you flick a bit of water and you've pulled a bit of plaster off, when you fill in another part of the ceiling, a little hollow, that plaster is slightly weaker. It's a slightly more diluted down version of plaster. So it dries a slightly different color. That's the only reason you get different colors. So don't worry about it. It doesn't make a bit of difference. Later on at the end of the set, you know, on your last wet trowel, when you're flicking water on, you're not really taking any plaster off. All you're taking back off is the milky water and that's very thin fat. You can't fill anything with that because it's got no, it's got nothing to set it. It's just basically water. So when you hear people saying you can't fill out of fat, they're talking about the later stages. At the beginning stages, it's fine. Right, don't worry about the, don't, what I'm trying to say is don't worry about the, the different colours as it's drying out. It doesn't make a difference. As long as it's flat and it's smooth, the job's done. Okay, so we've covered a brief introduction to the rolling set, the rolling gauge, or the rolling hit. It depends on where you are in the country, depends on what you're going to call it. Um, we've touched on straightening steel lines with the derby, and also getting around spotlights without getting it dropping in your face and without dragging big chunks of dry plaster across your ceiling. So, guys, hope you enjoyed that. Um, don't forget, if you want to win that trowel, and you are looking now, if you're watching this video before the 14th of March 2023, then you can still put your name on the list. It costs £4, and I think about 50p tops for the um, admin part of it. Less than a fiver, you can win that. Link's in the description. If you appreciate this video and you want to buy me a beer, there's also a link for that in the description as well. Just go in the description and click one of them links. <laughs> right, guys, you know I love you. Adios. What? You're still here watching? The video's ended. <laughs> it's the end. Look, I'm assuming if you're still here watching that you want to see more. So, YouTube will recommend the best next video of mine for you to watch here. But you have to poke the screen. You have to literally interact with the screen and press it to watch that video. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, subscribe here. If you're not subscribed... You click that. If I'm not worthy of your subscription, tell me what I have to do. Tell me what video you want to see, and I'll make you a video. Just subscribe, will you? What's the matter with you? And also, remember that pint I was on about. If you want to buy me a beer, that's here. Just click on that. Take you straight to a little thing where it take take three quid off you, and you'll buy me a pint. <laughs> Don't forget, if you want that trial, that's in the description. I can't do a link for that, so that's in the description. Right, go on. Away with you.